Hi there, Steve Kaufman again. Uh, it's kind of a not such a great day here in Vancouver, so I've decided to follow up my my previous um, video on the subject of the best way to learn a language, uh, and I'm now going to talk about how do we get to a conversational level in a language, because that was a question that was asked on my YouTube channel. So. Uh, I think all of you know that, that have followed some of my videos, uh, you know that I believe very much in the importance of input. Um, most of my language learning, uh, certainly in over the last, uh, I guess since 1980, where I have uh, learned uh, or very much improved in a bunch of languages, um, it's been based on input, listening and reading. Initially, uh, in the 80s, finding books with word lists in German and Italian and uh, Spanish. Uh, and then, uh, I guess, for the last 10 years, uh, taking advantage of MP3 players and stuff like that, working on Cantonese and Russian and Korean and Portuguese, and, and certainly very much improving, basically in all of my languages, primarily using input, listening and reading, and of course using our website at Link. But the question is, you know, when do we get to convert to, to being comfortable in conversations? Okay, here's my take on this. To be good at conversations, you have to have a lot of sustained conversations. Um, so if uh, you have, let's say, a limited vocabulary, but you happen to spend uh, two weeks in Mexico, you may achieve a certain level of conversational fluency using the very limited vocabulary that you have so that you may be able to go to a restaurant and between pointing and gestures and and saying you things you'll be able to communicate in Spanish and order and and so forth and and that'll give you a certain sense of satisfaction uh, if you come back to wherever you're from and you don't have that opportunity you'll very quickly lose that conversational ability um, for me, for example, I remember that I spent a fair amount of time on input in Portuguese, went to Portugal, but uh, partly because I was with my wife, so we were speaking English all the time, but I found it very difficult to have any meaningful conversation with Portuguese people um, because I couldn't follow very well what they were saying because they spoke English much better than I spoke Portuguese uh, and so forth. Uh, I remember even after several months of on and off working on Portuguese, I'd be invited to a function where there were a lot of Brazilians and I really couldn't follow the conversation, even though I had Spanish. So, but then I put in an additional three months and by that time we had better content in our library at Link. Plus I did, I got to where I could start to understand certain podcasts from Portugal and I did a lot of listening to them, and all of a sudden I went to Portugal again, and this time I could now converse. And I could converse on quite a wide variety of things. Again, very much helped by my Spanish, but at least I could understand what they were saying. So to me, conversational, you know, if you want to be conversational within a very limited range of, of subjects and, and limited vocabulary, uh, if you have that sustained opportunity to use the limited vocabulary that you have, you can probably get comfortable in, in sort of greetings and asking for a few things and, and, and smiling at the right time and so forth. Uh, if you want to be able to have more meaningful conversations, you still need to have that exposure. Like, again, I'm wandering a bit here, but I spent a month in Italy with my wife but I was exposed to a lot of Italian, did manage to speak some Italian in meaningful situations. There's no question that I came back, my Italian was much improved, much improved. So that, that regular exposure to the language is what's going to finally make you conversational. And you'll be conversational at whatever level that you have achieved through your input activities. So if you have had limited input activity, you have a limited vocabulary, you can nevertheless achieve a certain level of conversational comfort just using those words. Uh, and that kind of, it can give you that sort of get your, your fingers on the ledge now so you can start crawling up 
and participate in more conversations and then you'll hear more so it'll still be the input that's going to increase your word power so that you can then understand more and participate in more in more conversations however uh, if you continue to focus on input um, then uh, when you finally do get that sustained exposure conversational exposure then you'll be you'll be able to be conversational at a much higher level so the question was you know how long, how much input does it require to become become conversational i would turn it around and say you know at what level do you want to be conversational in my own case i want to be conversational at a level where i understand most of what is said where i can talk about a lot of different subjects and therefore i tend to delay putting myself in a situation where I get a lot of sustained exposure to conversation. Now, how much is required? If I have Spanish and I want to be comfortably conversational in Portuguese, if I have an hour a day to spend, then I, say, I think six months is enough. If I have more than an hour, if I have two hours a day, three hours a day, I could reduce that down to two or three months. That's going from Spanish to Portuguese. Uh, because again, my main thing is I want to understand what they're saying. Uh, if and that, that would be true basically for all Romance languages possibly French is a little more difficult Russian I've been working at for four years plus uh, I understand very well now I, I, in some ways I understand the political discussion in Russian better than in, in I would say in, in some of the languages that I speak better because I've been listening to so much political discussion in Russian I never must speak However, when I speak, I'm clumsy, I struggle to express certain things, I know that I make a lot of mistakes. Now, if I had, if I had the opportunity to have sustained exposure to Russian for a month, I know that my conversational ability would go way up. But, again, to answer the question, if it's six months to get comfortably conversational at a decent level with decent vocabulary in Portuguese going from Spanish, I've taken four years in Russian. Now, if at the end of two years I had gone to Russia for two months, one month, my conversational ability would have gone up, but I would have been at a lower level in terms of vocabulary. But I don't know, I would say with Russian or Chinese operating on the basis of one uh, hour a day, I think anywhere from two to four years is, is realistic. Uh, in terms of, of being able to, to, to speak intelligently and understand. I, I, I stressed, like to my mind, conversation is two-way. Conversation is not just about you saying something and then just being lost when the person replies. Conversational implies a more or less balanced exchange and, and where the other person doesn't have to make too many allowances for you and, and where you don't give the impression of not understanding. So, you know, it depends what your ambitions are in terms of conversational. If, if, uh, if you just want to be able to ask for the bathroom and order some food and, and um, exchange some pleasantries and tell them your name and where you live and how much you like their country, then that can come, of course, much earlier. But uh, my preference is to be comfortable in a variety of circumstances. And so I would say um, from English with no previous experience in language learning, the first language is going to be very tough. There is no question, I should mention this as well, that as I have learned more and more languages over the last 10 years, I've improved in all of them. Language learning is, is a skill. There's a language learning fitness level that you achieve by doing it. So the first new language you learn is more, very difficult. The second one gets easier and it just gets easier and easier as you go. So, conclusion. If it's a relate, very closely related language, I would still say six months, like Spanish to Italian. If it's not related and you're new at it, say from English to French or English to German, one hour a day, I would look at one to two years. If it's a difficult language like Russian or Chinese, I would go two to four years based on one hour a day of input-based learning. But you can choose to take the plunge anytime you want and you will achieve greater conversational ability when you expose yourself to that greater, you know, uh, sustained conversation. But unless you focus and continue to focus your efforts on input, your vocabulary will remain sort of stagnant 
and your ability to understand won't progress. And so I think that ability to understand is a big part of, of conversation, uh, conversational fluency. So I hope that answers the question that someone, I can't remember who it was, Mednos, there we are, asked on my uh, YouTube channel. Thank you for listening.